face cam for the rest of this episode so i really do apologize for that um i think the battery didn't charge properly last night and that kind of sucks um so i've got it on charge at the moment but it doesn't seem to, i don't know i'll have to try and figure it out i'm only recording one episode today so hopefully um i can get it fixed for tomorrow hopefully um but yeah so you won't see my reaction to the draw anyway but you wouldn't have uh, anyway so let's do a question of the day um well who is your favorite england player of all time if you don't say stuart pierce you're incorrect uh in that case i'm probably incorrect because stuart pierce was before my time like i'm only 25 so i don't really remember much so my first experience of football was the 1998 world cup and i don't know if stuart pierce was in the team or in the squad then but i can't remember him playing um for me, my favourite England player is probably Michael Owen. You know I bash Michael Owen a lot on Twitter just because he's a horrific pundit, but I've, he was one of my favourite players when I was a kid. And so that for that very reason, he's probably one of my favourite England players. Um, and David Nugent, obviously. You know, you can't not have David Nugent on that list. So um, if you do have any ideas, of course, for a question of the day, drop those in the comments too with the hashtag QOTD. Right, um, let's get into the draw. So seeded teams, teams we do not have to play against, thank you. Criminy. Um, Atletico, Barca, Bayern, Juve, Monaco, PSG, Real Madrid, and of course us. So teams we can play against. Um, so we can't play against Chelsea because they are in the same league as us. And we cannot be drawn against Genoa, I don't believe, uh, because they're in the same league as us as well. Sorry, you know what I mean about Chelsea. They weren't in the same league as us, but they were in our Champions League group. Um, so Bruges, Dortmund, Fenerbahce, Feyenoord, and the, and the United and Cities. Uh, sorry, the Manchester clubs. So if we could avoid the English sides there, that would be delightful. Dortmund, uh, Bruges, Fenerbahce or Feyenoord. Those would be my choices. However, I have a horrible feeling we're going to get City. That That's my sort of prediction for this draw. Um... Because it's not been kind to us in these draws at all, has it really? Um, so let's see. Genoa, they, well, we can't play Genoa. They will play against PSG. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Fenerbahce, come on, let's have Fenerbahce. Yes! Okay, I'll take that. Fenerbahce against Roma. That will be a good little couple of games. Dortmund will play Real Madrid. That will be a really tough tie to watch. Man United will play against Bayern Munich. Wow, that's a hell of a tie. Chelsea will play against Juventus. That seems pretty tough for them as well. Uh, Man City will play against probably Barca or something like that. No, Atletico. That's a damn tough tie as well. Uh, Club Bruges will play against Barcelona. And Feyenoord will play against Monaco. So, I think we got away with it a little bit. That. Fe but Fenerbahce, okay, probably stronger than perhaps uh, Bruges, perhaps. Although Bruges have done all right. Um, so I'm pretty pleased with that tie. I think over two legs, we can beat Fenerbahce and get to the quarterfinals this time around. Um, it's a question of what happens after that. We're just going to have to beat everyone. And we're looking good in form at the moment. So let's see what happens. So now you're going to see some highlights of firstly the Sassuolo game and all the other games that I have yet to play. So I'll see you guys in a second for that. Moon's ball out to John Halsetter. Can he find a really sensible pass? Capra through for Marks. He's surely offside. He must be offside. I don't think he is, you know. Someone must have played him on there. Roma won. Sassuolo nil. We go back to the top of the league. We really are having a great time of it late. Halsetter steps up from the spot and dispatches it. Roma 2, Sassuolo new, and that should be game in theory. Aaron, can he pull it back for someone? He does, it's Di Placido, and it's in the back of the net, and of course it's Di Placido, 22 goals this year. He's really starting to mount a challenge to be as good as he was in that first season again. There we have it, Roma 3, Sassuolo nil. They didn't even manage a shot on target. Irving Drupal, and it's cleared away, but not fully away. Di Placido, amazingly, he just is everywhere at the moment. That's his 16th goal of the season in the league and 23 in all competitions. Marcelo, you hero. Capra, lots of space. Placido must be offside here. Puts it in the back of the net, and I'll tell you what, I think that's actually onside. Empoli nil. Roma 2, Marcelo Di Placido grabs a brace, and I think, guys, he might well be back. Cleared downfield. Marin will not let down, but uh, Vyashinovic gets it, and Ryoki now coming through. Good tackle. Oh, good grief. Finds a space for Di Placido. Threw on goal. He must score, and he does. Hat-trick for Di Placido directly after halftime, and it's immediately there. And another goal for him, and what a season he is really having. Now, 25th goal of the year. Tackle by Dalsgaard. Hidalgo whips it in, and Savellini. Oh, my God. They've equalized. Well, they've got one back immediately. We've only had one minute played in the second half, and two goals already. For Caterini. Can we get the ball forward again? Erwig Drupal around the corner, across for Di Placido, and he's got himself a fourth one. Empoli 2, Roma 4, Marcelo Di Placido has grabbed himself a haul. Caterini, Capra, Di Placido through again, he scored a fifth one. Roma 5, Empoli 2, Marcelo Di Placido has got a glut of goals. He's got five goals in one game. I don't think I've ever seen that on this year's FM. But Di Placido, surely not. Surely not! He's done it! Empoli 2, Roma 6, Marcelo Di Placido has scored a double fucking hat-trick. I've never seen that on FM this entire year. That is insane, people. I, I, I'm lost for words. It's really now with the free kick. And it's in the back of the net. Empoli 2, Roma 7. I don't know where that's come from. What a second half performance. Caterini getting in on the act now. There go. Empoli 2, Roma 7. Six goals from Marcelo Di Placido. Christ on a bike. 
Arteta now whips that ball across and it's Mario at the back post and it's put in there by I think Albin Arapi. Yes, it is. His fifth goal of the season. Roma won. Latina nil. We're not really ripping it up in the league lately. It's great to see. Arteta with the ball in. This goes time goes short to Capra. Whips it across. Di Placido's header. And after four minutes, Di Placido's grabbed himself his 29th goal of the season. He really is an incredible player. Oh, we flipped it through and my goodness, Latina have scored. Their first shot of the game, and inside 10 minutes, it's Roma 2, Latina 1. Sit short for Caterini. You've got men in the box now. Capra, Dolls is one of them. Di Placido is another one of them, and it is 3 1 to Roma. And Di Placido is now having an absolute wonder time, frankly. Can he find anyone in the box? It's coming through here. Caterini. Roma 4, Latina 1. What are we doing lately? We've just been on the happy juice, it seems. Tin. And it's amazingly in the back of the net for Latina again. Impressive stuff. Thiago Mbese makes it Roma 4, Latina 2 before half time. Mbese. It's coming through here. Oh my goodness. Latina have made it 4 3 in the first half. What the earth is going on in these games lately? Capra now. Cutting across. Irving Drupal puts it in. Roma 5, Latina 3. And we've now scored 12 times in two matches. What are we doing? Coming, filling in for someone. Garcia whips it across. Di Placido's hair and unbelievable. Roma 6, Latina 3. Ro Di Placido has now scored nine times in two matches. I don't even know what to say. There we have it. Roma 6, Latina 3. Another hat trick for Di Placido. And he slip it through for Di Placido's onside and unbelievable. Parma nil, Roma 1, Di Placido. 10 goals now in three matches. What a season he is having now. Isn't Bonasoli round for Parma? Oh, it's in. Wasson looked like he was going to save that, but th then he just didn't. William Bonasoli makes it Parma 1, Roma 1. We've got a bit more work to do today. Again, though. Is there an overlapping run? There is. It saves our marks. He's through on goal and it's in off the crossbar, I think. Palmer two, uh, Palmer one, Roma two, Cesar marks in off the right wing, back from injury, and we're back in front again. Good stuff. Roma up for Di Placido. Can he turn his man to shoot? He does, and it's another goal. Palmer one, Roma three. Di Placido now has another brace today, <laughs> and 11 goals in three matches is mental. Needs to find a pass from quickly. Caterini is one of them. It's through here. Di Placido must be offside. He's pulled it all the way across for Cesar marks. Parma 1, Roma 4, marks again, and lovely setup there from Di Placido. There we have it, Parma 1, Roma 4, another fantastic victory for us. Oh, it's gone straight in, Roma 1, Atalanta 0, Simone Capra, first real chance of the game really, and it is Roma 1, Atalanta 0. And off the crossbar, Marin Kone, and we finally got ourselves a rebound goal, Roma 2, Atalanta 0, Walter Marin Kone with the goal, the weakened side are now two goals to the good. With another free kick, and Marin this time, every goal has been from a free kick, Roma 3, Atalanta 0, Jefferson Marin this time with the, free, with the goal. We have it guys, a weakened Roma team, 3, Atalanta 0, we're on fire. Down the side, Di Placido is in the box if he can find him. Whips it across, Caterini gets in there instead. Roma 1, Atalanta 0. And we are staying in that title battle at the very top, at least for now. Goes short, round the side, it's, I think, Di Placido or Caterini. It's Caterini, Roma 2, Atalanta 0. And that should be the goal that wraps up another win for us in a really perfect month for us, really. Pull things off now. Capra whips it across, Elvis is in the box, not quite. Caterini now into the box. Elvis can turn and have another shot. And this time he does put it in. Roma 3, Atalanta 0. Back-to-back 3-0 wins over Atalanta. We're laughing. And there we have it. Another 3-0. Another win. What a month this has been. Caterini's free kick again. Lops it over the top of Marin Coney. What a lovely piece of play that is from Roma. Capra finishes off the move, but what a lovely work. Set piece. Roma 1, Genoa 0. Completely deserved. And we're rocking again. Plays a lovely ball in. Marin Coney drops it down for Christian. Dowsgaard is blocked. It's back. Marin Coney's back. And it's in the back of the net. I think about it. Marin Coney again. It is Walter Marin Coney. Two cup appearances. And he scored two goals for us. Roma 2, Genoa 0. 2, Genoa 0. Through to the semis. Right, guys, we're back. And so, yeah, I, at the time, of course, from the earlier bit, did not know what was about to happen. And unfortunately, I couldn't get the camera fixed too, which kind of sucks. Hopefully, I'll be able to sort that out for tomorrow, though, because I don't like doing things without face cam anymore. It feels weird. Um, so I hope you just bear with me on that one. But yeah, so... I do not believe what Marcelo Di Placido has done this month. He's scored, I think, 12 times. Uh, but more importantly, a double hat-trick, followed by a hat-trick, followed by a brace in three matches. What is he smoking? Because I won some. That's in insane. I even Millington did not score a double hat-trick for Pompey. That is incredible. I've never seen a player score a double hat-trick for me in a sort of in a league setting. That is insane. And he really does seem to be back. And we've literally won every single game this month. I'm just going to quickly show you um, 
how good we've actually been this month because I'm in shock. We've also won 13 of our last 15 league matches with two draws being the other two. We are just on fire. Um, seven, six, four. Some th now we've gone back to being good defensively as well. It's just... It's an incredible ride that we're on right now. Here's how the league looks. Amazingly, we're still not top of the league. Uh, Juve have just won every game as well, basically, which has been insane. And there's still a little gap back, but it's just ridiculous how hard we're having to work just to try and stay up with them. Marcelo Di Pacita's got 26 goals in 20 appearances. Uh, Capra's got 14 assists. Look at this. It's mental. And it is brilliant to see at the same time, frankly. I'm, I'm, I'm just so impressed. So here's how the squad looks. Um, at the moment, let's just look at the last five games. Caterini, look at that, 8.7 over his last five matches. And despite Di Placido doing what he's done over his last few games, he played um, relatively poorly uh, against Atalanta in the Cup, getting a 5.8, and that's really dragged him down. So... Caterini, though, look at that, an average of 8.7 over the last five matches. That is absurdly good. And I have to say that this month's award for just, like, the player of the month goes to Caterini and Di Placido in a joint effort just because of what he's done. He's got the award for most likely to make Norman Millington have a heart attack, frankly. And Caterini just, uh, is just a monster with assists. He really, really is. Um, Got to say, Hauserta really does post some really good numbers generally. He's got fantastic pass completion as well. So here's top, top scorer Di Placido, 33 and 28. Uh, Caterini marks with 8 apiece. Piece. As for assists, Capra has 18 and Caterini has 14. Insane stuff. It really is. Pass completion, um, Halset with 93%. And he's played a few games now. So, annoyingly, we're going to be suspending... Uh, sorry, Halset and Dolzgaard and Marim will all miss today's game against Juventus. Two through suspension and Marim's got a strained ankle or a sprained ankle, which means uh, five weeks out. So that could be a problem for us. Now... You might be wondering where this sort of form came from and what I'm thinking. Uh, basically, I changed one tiny little thing. During the game against, um, was it Latina that we beat six? No, it was, uh, fucking, can't remember. Let's have a quick gander. It was the game against Empoli. That's the one. Um, at one point, that game was pretty tight. And when it was 3-2, I changed one tiny little thing. They pushed themselves out and they had a back three. And I thought, fuck it, we'll put it on um, look for overlap as well as exploit the flanks. And I've left it on that ever since. And it has just turned us into an absolute machine. We've been just chewing up teams and spitting them out, basically. Um, so apologies for the very long highlights package. But there has been a shitload of goals to edit. That, that was an editing nightmare, I can assure you. And the first 10 rating as well. Look at that, a 10. Um, but there you go. So... It's just, it's just mental to see him actually do that. But there we have it. So, yeah, basically, that's the change I made. Literally, all I did... So, if you're looking at home and you want to try something out, literally, all I did was add... Um, where is it? Look for overlap to this tactic. That's literally all I did. Um, so, yeah, that's that's literally all I did. We have been playing on... Um, uh, blah, 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 well, not counter-attack. Um, on control for most of this so i do actually can as much as i would like to go and play counter-attacking football against juventus today i actually think that might be the best approach to just do what's been working for us this month and what's been working has been that style so we're going to go with diplacido caterini capra irving drupal falcao marx antonio alian uh, Arapi and Kalashnikov. The back line is not as strong as I would have liked. Um, unfortunately, we had to shuffle stuff around due to the in uh, due to the injury to Marim and the suspension to Dolzgaard. So we could be a little bit weaker at the back. Uh, thankfully, in the middle, Falcao can fill in for Hal Serta, so that's not too much of a big deal. Uh, but I still would much rather have them available. Um, as for our chances against Roma to, uh, Juventus today, I just think we've got to just go out there and have a crack at it. Why the hell not? At this point, it's all or nothing for us really in the sense that we need to try and get ourselves back into this league and we're, we're sticking with them all on all right it's just they've not dropping any points either they've won every game that we've won over the last month or so and it means that we're pulling away from the teams below us by quite a substantial amount now but there's just no gaps basically we were they are been they've been so good and they're the home team here so we've got to really be on our game today but we're both coming into this in incredible form and this is a bit like the unstoppable force versus the unmovable object at this point uh because we're both on incredible winning runs we're unbeaten in 13 no 15 league matches or something absurd capra now is through for marks but he won't quite get that dia puts that ball downfield and that should be mopped up by Alian, who I'm not entirely sure. I feel like if there's going to be a weak link in our back line today, it will be him. And I worry about that. Oh, good God. A rap. He's played a horrible ball to Luna. And Luna's missed it pretty much very easily there. Um, so early opportunity there for Juve. Hopefully we can start to get a bit of a foothold in this game now. Um, there we go. Get a bit of possession, which is good. Adilson. The Juve are the only real predator that we have in this league, frankly. I think that we can comfortably win at this rate pretty much every other game. and We'll get an absurd points tally. The issue is going to be... Can we do enough and avoid dropping points in shitty places? Oh, and it's 1-0 to Juve. 
uh, I don't think we've even been behind at any stage over the past sort of six, seven matches. We've really been that good. Um, so we're going to have to step it up a notch here. But it's 12 minutes in. It's only their first shot of the game on target. So I don't see that that's going to be a way of the game going. I think that we should still be able to get something out because I don't really want to fall four points behind them at this stage. I, I really don't. I feel like we're probably a better team than them at this point. Uh, apologies for the highlights. Take a little wild load, unfortunately, because I don't use the highlights when I'm recording the stuff here. It's a good strike from Oliveira. Boisson maybe could have done a little bit better, but hey, he's hit that so hard. What chances he got? Um, so let's just see. Here we go. Uh, we've actually done okay since, but we may need to concentrate a bit more. Kalashnikov. Can he slip it down the channel? He can for Katarini. Not really where I want him. Irving Drupal, that's more like it. He's got two players on him. Can he dig out across? No. But he's got the ball back again. Whips it in nicely anyway. Falcao, we need a quick equaliser. That'd be perfect to get back on level terms as quickly as we can. Capra, Di Placido now. He's through on goal and he's blasted it over the bar in a very un -Di placido like way. I'm going to turn it on to concentrate now anyway. Because uh, we've only hit the target once so far. Oliveira now with a free kick. And it's been blocked by the wall. We've had several opportunities where a free kick has gone out and hit someone we've not had the rebound goal from it oh which is frustrating uh, this month i think we did actually score one but we also had six other occasions where what i thought would have been a rebound goal usually was not a rebound goal it was a bit frustrating actually um because they do seem to happen quite a lot when they're against us but we would never seem to be able to get that many of them which is a bit of a shame adelson Oliveira. there's plenty of players in there we shouldn't really concede from this angle there's too many players in the box for them to actually get a clean shot away. You'd have thought, oh my God, and on the rebound, it's Juve 2, Roma 0. Mario Augusto, that's a sh that's a bit annoying. Uh, they've really turned up the heat a little bit, but now we're 2 nil down. Oh, we've done so well this month, and Juve just looked like they've got that little bit of an edge over us. Adelson strike, well saved by Boisson, but he's not prepared for the rebound, and it's poked into the net by Mario Augusto. We may have to go on attacking. Um... In fact, we may just have to go on attacking now. I'm going to turn it off a shorter passing and try to step our game up a little bit and see if we can get back in it quickly. Because um, we've been superb this month and I'm not about to let this go waste. Mario Augusto, three players around... Oh, if that had gone in, I'd have been furious. Uh, he does need closing down. Yes, he does. Um, they've hit the target way more than us. They're looking at... Oh, Boisson again. They've really turned it up a notch. And I guess... You know, we've played weaker sides, but we've still beaten some decent teams this month. Genoa, Atalanta twice, you know... They're not the big sides, but they're still not bad. And we've absolutely put some teams to the sword this month. And I was kind of hoping it would work today, but it just doesn't seem to be uh, against Juve away. Um, I still think that we've got enough in the tank to catch up any points deficit against them in the other games because we are that good at the moment. But I don't want this to harm our confidence uh, in any way, which would kind of suck because we've got Fenerbahce coming up, uh, although that's a little while away. So I'm not really sure how I'm going to do the live comps for that just yet. Mario Augusto's ball in. Oliver and Boisson. I don't know what that hit. It didn't look like it hit anything and yet it somehow ended up on my goalkeeper's arms. But there you go. Still not at half time yet. Juve really have. We've been so bad today. Uh, that's a real shame. I just kind of hope they play a very different system. That's what I would say. Compared to what the other teams have been doing, um, Juve's system is a lot different. I might actually turn it off of a look for the overlap because it might just be causing us to get caught out a little bit. And I'd prefer not to do that for the second half um, just yet. They've gone three up top. I tell you what, actually, uh, I might put it back on again. It was systems like that that actually enabled us space to use that instruction. I think they may have changed it at half time. So we might have a bit more luck in the second half. I'm, it's very weird that they've gone three up top. Um, when they're 2-0 up. So we're just... I'm actually going to just quickly switch it back to counter-attack because they're clearly not content with just what they've got. And I want to see if we can nick something on the break here. Um, you know, we've created some good chances ourselves. Augusto's ball in. Arapi's clearance. Right, let's break. Capra now. He's got a man out wide. Can he find him? He finds Di Placido instead. That'll do. He's got space through the middle. Caterini, huge numbers at the back post. Marks must score here. He must score here and he doesn't. Oh, what are you doing? We've created two really good chances and we've missed both of them. That's the problem today. We've been so clinical all month, but against Juve, we've just bottled it, which is a real shame. Um, Oliveira flying forward now into Malcolm. Um, now they're going to counter us, it seems. Maybe they've switched tactics a little bit. Malcolm, ball back across and cleared away by Allian. Doesn't help that we've not got our first choice centre-backs out, but really we should be doing better than that. Um, oh, shit, I should have changed that really, shouldn't I? Uh, we've not hit the target enough either. I really don't know what's going on with that. 12 shots and only two of which have been on target. That's a bit poor for us, really. Uh, Arapi should be looking for Di Placido here if he could find it, but we're playing it short instead, which is good. Capra now. And, oh, hello. Dennis Kettleson is going off. We've still got half an hour left here, folks. I might just immediately switch this back to attacking. We're, we're only two goals down. He's going off the pitch. We've got an hour, sorry, half an hour against 10 men. Right, we're going to tell him to concentrate. Actually, no, we're going to tell him to push forward at this point. Uh, caution is going to be thrown into wind. We're going to push higher up. We're going to be a more... Uh, no, wait. I'm also going to switch... It. I, I might as well just switch to overload. No, we'll leave it... Sorry, I'm a bit indecisive here. Uh, we'll leave it on attacking for like 
10 minutes and if not we'll go to overload after that um i might make a substitution now as well actually uh just to try and freshen things up a little bit Irving drupal's not had the best game today so he's going to come off capra i would bring him off I look at the placido as much as i want to bring him off because he's not had a good game no one's really had a good game for us so far so i might actually just get alian off i might just make a triple sub here actually and get elvis on for katarini because he's been worse uh and just throw caution at this one now we need to see if we can get back into this and hope to god that something happens here um I'm tempted to throw on overload now at this point anyway. Um, I'd be annoyed if they scored against us with 10 men. Ball across and Malcolm and a good... Well, not a save, actually. Uh, oh, apparently it was a save. Didn't look like he touched the keeper, but oh well. Um, at least get a goal back in this one. You've had enough chances to do that. Ball over the top and... Oh, the one time you really wanted to just sail over their head like it always seems to and it doesn't. Augusto's ball in. Brought down. Biro, Biro. And oh, what about that? And somehow the 10 men are now 3-0 up. Ah, oh dear. We've just not taken our chances today. We've had some good opportunities. We may not have had as many shots as them, but they've had seven long shots to our none. And it's kind of inflated their shot tally a little bit. In fact, without that, they'd only have 80. And they'd still be the better side. Let's make no mistake about it. But 3-0 feels a little bit harsh, particularly with 10 men, guys. Come on, you can do better than that. Um... Because I hope this doesn't affect our confidence. Probably fine in the next game. Suddenly we lose every match again now. Uh, Di Placido flicks it through for Elvis. He must score from the angle and he doesn't. Yet again. Three clear-cut chances apiece and we've missed all three of ours. And that's the difference bef between us, frankly. They've been the better side in those areas. Mario Augusto, ball in again. Cleared away. Get on the get on the end of this, guys. Come on. Fly forward. We need some... Oh, what was that? What a shocking pass. Luna's ball through and Malcolm Boisson makes the save again. And it's been a weird, weird game. 3-0 feels a little bit harsh, but then what can you do? Um, against 10 men, we should be doing better than that, really. We really, really should. Um, we're going to have to really step it up for the rest of the season. Elvis with the strike, and it goes over the bar quite comfortably. We've just not hit the target enough. Um, that's the only issue, really. Um, I feel like if we'd hit the target more, there it is, 3-0. Disappointing, considering what we've done this month. If we'd hit the target more, we probably would have been okay. That was really disappointing. Um, I think we did deserve more, to be honest, but... I don't think we deserve to win or draw, but I think we deserve to not lose perhaps 3-0. But there we go. We've got to get right back on the horse with Pescara and Sassina coming up soon. And in the next episode, now, I don't really know what to do because we've got Fenerbahce, but look at the amount of... I think we may have to do the first leg of Fenerbahce in the next episode. I'm not entirely sure whether I'd do that as another episode or not because that is a huge number of games that we're coming up to now. So I'm not really sure how I'm going to do that at this point. So I will decide uh, when it comes to the time, depending on what happens with cut matches as well. So guys, if you like what you've seen, please do drop a like on the video, um, if only for Di Placido's goal record this year. If we can get it to 150, that would be glorious. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. That would mean the world to me. And I will see you guys in the next episode for an away leg against Fanabache, where things start to get even more serious. I'll see you guys soon. Tough watching. Bye-bye.